Welcome to the show. I'm your host, Connor Reynolds, and this is the Nerd at Gods podcast, episode 122. Joining me as always, Daniel Neveroli. What's up, gamers? Yeah. Now you sound like the thing from The Grudge. Uh, 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 people used to always do that when mm-hmm. we were younger, you know? Uh, not a fan I anymore. Hate him. Not a fan <laughs> I hated anymore. Him. How is The Grudge not like one of those franchises that have like a million spinoffs you know it has what two there was like a sequel i'm right? sure there's a bunch but it's like you figure it'd be like fucking saw by now or the how many of them how many is the, 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 the japanese ones yeah there might be more of those huh yeah there's definitely a question. sequel to the japanese one i know that yeah there's at least two i thought there was more than two in the mm. japanese version the gr- and the and the ring in the ring are the ring and the grudge the same thing no that's not the same thing huh it's not the same thing very no, similar the, the, though no, the ring is the one about the the tape. That's the, the TV grudge one. is the one about like the the like it was uh, I guess the, in the American version the grudge where um, Buffy the Vampire Slayer is like taking care of the old lady and then there's like a demon kid there. Yeah, that's 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 the grudge. Does the same scary movie rip off both of those? Um, no. Is that why I, I think... confuse these. Well, I know that they make fun of it, uh, of the ring in in Scary Movie three. Mm-hmm. But did they make fun of the Grudge in Scary Movie three? I thought that wasn't maybe in Scary Movie four. Maybe. It wasn't there a kid dressed up like they actually had like some kid that looked like the kid from the Grudge. I just remember when <laughs> the thing from the ring pops out of the TV. That lady just starts beating her ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like I'm beating her ass, ready, holding her hair. Just yeah. She winds it up. Yeah, <laughs> uppercuts her. <laughs> That's what I always think in these movies. You know, it's yeah. like, I'm gonna beat the shit out of that thing. <laughs> you know, <laughs> little girl out pops out the TV. TV. Yeah, <laughs> like come, you're like this tall, little girl. All right, <laughs> like come on, <laughs> I will beat the fuck out of you. Uh, so good. Very good. Very good. I think scary movies coming back. No, <laughs> I, 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 I don't think, think it needs to. You don't think it, it needs to? Have the Wayans no. coming back? Mm, good question. If the Wayans are coming back, maybe. But the reason why down. I dropped off was because, like, like I like Scary Movie three, but like it, it only got worse at, over time, and it's like, and you can kind of tell it's like the Wayans had less to do with it, and it's like, okay, well, Scary Movie four and five suck. They're bad, especially five. Five is trash. Well, remember then they started making just uh, movie spin-off whatever these are called uh, things uh spoof movies spoof movies just off other properties yeah right? or that, that wasn't like, them but it, uh, yeah but it was just like in a similar vein Eat right Spartan yeah, and, yeah 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 that all shit those all those were awful trash. none of them were funny no they're funny to laugh at that's a good time with friends like getting some beers and, just because like, they're that bad movies. yeah they're so bad yeah yeah if, like, if the way yeah like late are... 2000s there's so many of those mm-hmm if the Waynes are attached to it, I'd be like, okay, I'll watch it. Um, did you watch the Haunted? Is it Haunted House? No, I've never seen that with, one. With That's Marlin? like the, the yeah. found footage spoof, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just him. I don't think any of the other Waynes have to do with it. But it's it's funny if you like Marlin, like he plays like he's goofy, but he's not quite the Marlin goofiness. But they're good. Mm. I have to check those out. Uh, Daniel. Yes. Let's get into this. It's been another busy week. <laughs> In the world of video games. Do we want to? I, don't <laughs> I mean, we could just talk about scary movie or something else, I guess, for this uh, this I'm entire just... time. You know, I guess we don't have bad. to get in. The video game news is nothing but depressing. So it's just like, I mean, oh, I don't know. Crazy. I guess the fun world of Nintendo will, will at least give us something. But uh, it's not like PlayStation's better. <laughs> I don't want nah, to jump not, ahead. Not really. They're, they're I mean, it's not, that's not a fun news story to talk about either. <laughs> you know, just, it's yeah, like... In general. It's like really none of these are uh, are really that fun. I mean, we got some Mark Hamill shit. That's cool, I guess. But uh, all right, let's do this. First up, then, <laughs> Xbox has decided to close down multiple of its Bethesda-owned studios, including Tango GameWorks, Arcane Austin, Alpha Dog Studios, and lastly, Roadhouse Games will now be folded into ZeniMax Online. Uh, we got a little bit of reasoning here i think there was an email oh. from the first day of from matt booty let me see what matt booty said here exactly in the email his quote is we are making these tough decisions to create compass 
uh, capacity to increase investment in other parts of our portfolio and focus on our priority games. Not yet clear how many jobs will be lost in this whole thing. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, there's some other stuff that came out the next day from Jason Schreier that we can also get into. But Daniel, we'll stop here for a minute. First yeah. thoughts, big news. It's happened on Tuesday, right? Woke up. Yeah. Woke up one of those half asleep. But look at my phone. Uh, I, I posted in the Discord. It, yeah, I read it, and I just like turn it off, go back to bed. I'm like, I'm not. I'm, I'm not dealing with this right nah, now. <laughs> I'm not. No. <laughs> no. I'm gonna wake up and hope that was a dream. <laughs> that's that's what I'm gonna do. So here we are, Daniel. Uh, yeah. So Arcane Austin closed. Tango GameWorks closed. Alpha Dog Studios closed. Roundhouse yeah. get folded into Zenimax online. Yeah, that was what I was going to clarify. Like they closing the studio, but they are like keeping those employees, which is I guess the best case for them. Yeah, apparently they were heavily working with Zenimax online to help mm -hmm. them with uh, Elder Scrolls online and whatnot already before that. So at least there's there's some good there, right? At least they're these people don't seem to be losing their jobs. Maybe there still will be some jobs lost throughout this whole transition process for them, but. For now, it, it seems at least that company is just being folded into Zenimax Online. But then, yeah. top level thoughts, I guess. Uh, pretty, pretty shocking news. I don't even know I'd how say. we want to tackle this, really. Yeah, there's, but... there's a lot of different angles we can go from here. Um, if you, if you want, I can read the second news story that goes along with yeah. it. Yeah. Then, okay, let's just jump into yeah, that then too as well. So then the next day to go along with Tuesday's news, Jason Schreier is reporting that Xbox isn't done cost cutting and that part of the reason Tango and Arcane Austin were, were closed was because they were in between projects at the moment. Also, Tango was pitching a sequel to Hi-Fi Rush and Arcane Austin was pitching a single player immersive sim, not unlike Dishonored. Uh, I didn't get a chance to read through the entire Bloomberg article that Jason Schreier wrote here, so I might be missing a couple details there. But that seems to be the that gist of it. That seems to be what I remember, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Those are the major bulletin points of what's going on there. And then also he, he puts, Activision Purchase has ramped up scrutiny on Xbox and much more. So that's his other major bulletin yeah, point. Yeah, I from, guess it being a big purchase. Um, that's going to get eyes of Microsoft, not just like, they're not just leaving Xbox alone, right? Like, probably how they were for a while. That's a huge investment in xbox so now now you're going to get microsoft the corporate microsoft to look at them more than they probably have been since probably what the 360 era was probably the last time i would i would assume microsoft was heavily involved in what they were doing over there yeah i mean it, it microsoft's probably looking closer at xbox than ever before honestly yeah. right with like like we saw how much the uh the revenue percentage jumped up for microsoft in xbox uh after just that from activision, activision yeah after the activision blizzard purchase right it didn't jump up like a, i can't remember exactly but like a lot of spots in their in yeah. their like different businesses that xbox has you know it's just uh i don't know if it was like third or fourth most money revenue coming in then from xbox mm -hmm. now but you know it was up there i think they are third now yeah, yeah. i think it's tencent and playstation yeah or the other two and I think they're third. No, no, no. I don't. I don't mean that. I mean like you know, compared to Windows and other things that Microsoft does, it's it's oh, like it's see, like see, Xbox yeah. is now one of the top earners for Microsoft as a whole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I we, we talked about that a couple months ago, right? Yeah. When that happened. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um. Yeah, I don't really know how to tackle this because this is. I don't. It just doesn't make any sense to me. One of them makes more sense than the other, I think. But, or I guess, and we're just talking about really the two bigger ones of Arcane, uh, Austin, and Tango Gameworks. One makes way more sense to me of why they would close, even though I think that's still not a good choice, than the other. I, it just doesn't make any sense why you would close a studio that just put out a we one of our favorite games of last year and if not so far of the generation but i would probably say that for both of us right if i oh yeah 100 percent. one of our favorite games this gen game. yeah. right uh so a critical darling apparently had sold well enough and then now it's on other platforms or four million players was was their last update okay so is this is that before exactly but playstation i think that was like a late 2023 thing Okay, so yeah, before PlayStation, and now they're getting more players. PlayStation, yeah. and if it's gonna, is it on Switch yet? No. And okay. the the rumor around that is that has now been canceled. 
that port Probably. there's there was rumors that it was going to be ported to switch 2 when that launches um maybe that could still happen i don't know but it's the rumors so it's because uh matt booty specifically said hi-fi rush will continue to be playable on all platforms it's currently on he didn't say anything about it coming to other things mm -hmm. so a lot of people are theorizing that it, if there it was yeah, a switch to port at some point it's probably canceled that also who would who would do it now you know uh i mean they they could find someone to do it if they, they really could wanted yeah it. that's yeah. i mean there's still uh, they still, own still the a game. glimmer of hope if you're hoping to get hi-fi rush on switch too but yeah I, I, it's probably not through. high but i would assume like if they wanted to really do it they probably could yeah um but it just doesn't make any sense that they would close their only japanese studio when they keep that they own they own this japanese studio this isn't someone they're partnering with or you know looking to acquire they own the studio like why why would you close them when we only keep hearing phil and you know xbox leadership talk about you know investing more in japan and in, in a in a market that they're not very dominant in or have never been dominant in even in what xbox at their peak you know I just that doesn't make any sense. Yeah, they I mean, can't cost that much. No, there's no way that they cost. Same with Arcane, uh, Austin. Yeah, I mean, also uh, you think about that. It's like Austin. Uh, I mean, it's sure, a popular area now in in the U.S. Right, yeah. and I'm sure it's not like the cheapest area, but like compared to your L.A., that. New York studios, stuff like that, like it's cheaper way it's way yeah. fucking cheaper than that, right? Um. Yeah, and then on the Japanese studio side, yeah, I couldn't agree more. It's like, what what are you thinking exactly? We've heard for years from from Phil and all the Xbox heads that they want to get bigger in Japan. They want to focus more on Japan studios, get more second party Japanese games being made for Xbox consoles and stuff like that. And you finally have a Japanese studio, and you shut them down before they even really made a game for you, right? Like Hi Fi Watch, sure was an Xbox game, but that was well into development before they even purchased Bethesda, right? Mm-hmm yeah it's just uh it's just i mean it's it's just kind of a baffling decision particularly on tango gameworks for the That's whole thing yeah, like yeah. i can understand the other three somewhat right roadhouse is a bit a bit weird too considering how big they want to get into mobile yeah. roadhouse has released a couple no, i don't know alpha dog alpha dog alpha dog yeah excuse me yeah. uh I, alpha dog yeah, is is weird so is considering king now only it, king yeah considering how much they want to get into mobile and you have a developer that's pretty experienced in the mobile space now right and that mighty do game that that game was fucking awesome like i played that game you know i don't you play phone it, games yeah. at all but like i'm sure it wasn't like super successful compared to most phone games but it was a cool game and now you I've have a developer that has good experience on their on their mobile games right so i don't understand that one really at all and then uh arcane austin i, I mean look i'm not, i don't want to shit mean, on him but bad like game. Okay. yeah it, it's one bad game and it's just it, it, you know it's like why not try and let them do what they're good at first Didn't if they, they, were, say they were pitching Didn't an immersive they... single player <laughs> game right it's like okay let do that try that you know here's my whole thing with this is just like what is what are you guys doing now <laughs> You know, it's just like, what, wasn't the plan that you guys want to make Game Pass successful? It, like, wasn't that the whole thing we've been told for the last five years, at least probably more at this point? It, it, to make Game Pass successful, you need content and a constant array of content oh, coming yeah. in co month after month after month. That's what you yeah. need. That's how you make a subscription service successful. I think they were hoping like one, 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 like small ish and then a month and then maybe a, a every what three months have a big one right? yeah like that was if, what they were thinking the plan seemed to be every quarter we'll have a big game from xbox yeah. from one of our own studios and then in in those months in between we will get whether it's an indie game or a, a big triple a game or something like that we will have one of those and that will keep you back month after month that will keep us having subscribers month after month and that will keep those subscribers happy so they don't just cancel their subscription right away yeah uh, after they play the game they want to play and, and granted, it, uh, we don't know how well that was all working out. Xbox just got going on that, really. You know, from from their own cadence, from the own Xbox side, they just got going on that, really, with Starfield. And then it, it was kind of going from there. I know there's been a long gap between Forza and Hellblade right now, and that's kind of unfortunate. 
but mm-hmm. it's still they they were just getting going and especially this year like, was looking great this year is looking great you know it's hellblade and then a few months later we'll get about indiana jones Indy. all that yeah and so if that was the plan what what changed what happened here it's the same thing with them putting games over on playstation it's just like i feel like if you guys would just stick to the fucking plan for just a minute just let let you know, we'll get into the whole Phil side and like I gotta. I mean, maybe I, I he's really not allowed to at this point. Yeah, I, maybe that's what I'm thinking. And, and that's that goes back to Microsoft actually yeah. looking much more closely at Xbox. It's like I feel like Microsoft is coming in here and being like, "No, we we want to make money now from all mm-hmm. angles." You know, we're not worried about the future plan. How do we make money right now? How do we save money I right now? And how do we make the most money the right now? Just for how tech is, is what I would say. Sure, but it, no. and then so you close down Tangle Gameworks, who is a company with multiple teams who just put out two great games last year. I, I guess Ghostwire Tokyo didn't come out last year, but it came out on Xbox the, consoles yeah. last year. So, and they are, have a good cadence of putting out games. They're able to whip out these games pretty fucking quickly, right? Like two, three year development cycles, I would assume for the next Hi Fi or whatever the Ghostwire team would move on to or whatever, right? They're also a team. That are very capable of jumping between genres. They've made AAA linear third person horror game, first, first person, person shooter, open world, first person, first yeah, person yeah. horror shooter type of thing, and then a third person rhythm action game, right? Yeah. You don't find a lot of studios like that out no. there that, that are this that is versatile. A, we talked about this last year. Very horizon like. Yeah. It's like they're jumping a genre and they're yeah. nailing the genre. You know? And they did like, it three times successfully, yeah. you know? Yeah. Like I granted, Ghostwire Tokyo might not have sold that well. Hi Fi Rush might not have sold that well. I'm very confident, but who game. really cares? You know, it's like it's like the, the idea that you need for Game Pass is content. You know, that's that's really it. It's and these are the type of things that you build upon. You have multiple Hi Fi Rushes. You have multiple Pentiments. You have stuff like that. All of a sudden, people start looking at Game Pass like. Oh, there's a lot of good shit on Game Pass now. You know, it's like, has granted, maybe the one <laughs> yeah. Hi Fi Rush game isn't going to get a bunch of people in, but you have multiple Hi Fi Rushes on there, multiple games that size, multiple high quality games that reviewed super well that are being talked about for Game of the Year and stuff like that. Now you're bringing in subscribers over the years. And now you just threw out one of the studios that is best suited for that model. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. I'm wondering. I mean, this is just kind of talk anyways, but I'm wondering if that blank check that Phil had oh, for a long time, wonder if it's kind of dried up. Yeah, I mean, I got to wonder personally if they're if they're looking at Game Pass and like, what are we really doing here with, with yeah. Game Pass now, you know? If and, Microsoft is doing it, not Phil. Right? Yeah, not Phil, yeah. not Phil and his yeah. team. I mean, I think his vision this whole time was to build Game Pass. I think he had a great vision for what Game Pass was supposed to be and like, you know, we saw it from the the FTC leaks. They want to get, they wanted, to, I should say now, to get to that hundred million marker by what was it, twenty thirty or whatever. And they were on. Yeah, like I don't that. know if they ever would have got that high, but they were on a good path to do that, right? At, at least a couple years ago. And granted, I know the games weren't coming out a couple years ago, but once the games started flowing and started coming out more, and all these studios actually started putting out exclusives for Xbox, they were on a good path to do that. Now it's just like I don't I don't know man <laughs> like I could see I don't know if Xbox will pl- will drop Game Pass entirely at some point but I could certainly see a world where they drop day one Xbox games coming to Game Pass at some point which would just really kill Game Pass I think um and yeah man it's just uh, you know I'm just heartbroken for Tango I really am it's just man me and you really loved that Hi-Fi Rush game that was so cool it was it's the best new IP Xbox has put out in over a decade. I, I stand by that. I liked it more than I fucking like Starfield. And I fucking love Bethesda games, you know? And, and, and that's, like, crazy for me to say. That's crazy for me to even think about. But I really did. And it's just, like, you had a good new Xbox IP that could have been a mascot for Xbox. We and talked about just, that all year last year. All year. And now you guys just threw it out the fucking window. Like, I what are we doing not. here? <laughs> the what other, are we doing here? The other three, I can somewhat understand. It's It's so unfortunate these people lost their jobs. And I really do feel for them. And I hope they're able to go and and find new jobs and stuff like that but tango game works i just cannot make sense of in any way xbox wants critical darlings right yeah like that's mostly what they're kind of like they're looking for sales of course they're looking for money but they want games that that people like and that review well right like that's a big thing they want to hit those things they had one you had it 
He has had it. And that's what I'm saying is like you need those th on Game Pass. And you get enough of those over time. People will start looking at Game Pass. It's like, oh, man, there's a shit ton of good games over there, you know? Mm -hmm. and same thing with the console. And that leads into console sales, you know? That, that, that leads in, oh, shit, there's a shit ton of good games over on Game Pass now. A shit ton of these small, high-quality games over on Game Pass now. Cool, I can buy that, fucking play through all those games, whatever. And then I'll go out, buy an Xbox for that buy that for game pass all that it all leads into you know it all leads into making more money and now you guys just threw that out yeah i my question now is like if this is the path we're going when it's kind of we, we're seeing the path that they're kind of going right now like anyways hey no hey, i, I want to bring this up the um okay so you, you go back to what matt booty said uh uh Increase investment in other parts of our portfolio and focus on our high priority games. Who does that sound like, Daniel? Sounds like fucking PlayStation. Yeah. Exactly who that sounds like, you know? The difference being is that they, PlayStation's not, their main thing is not the subscription service. And maybe Xbox isn't their main thing, isn't the subscription service anymore. But from what we've been told for the last five years, that is. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's funny that you say, that you say it like that too. Like it does sound like PlayStation, but like it just seems like the every everyone everywhere is realizing that they're not making money, and what what everyone is doing is not working. I don't think it's just pure. Obviously, it is like a pure capitalism thing, but it's it's like these companies are just not making money for what the status quo and what they're doing right now. Like, what have we been talking about basically the entire run of the show? Games taking too long to make and they cost too much to make and that's you know that's that's a lot of people that you have to pay right that's that goes into the money so the big solution everyone like here listen to me playstation xbox make games cheaper and quicker but daniel and put them out they were tango gameworks is that yeah. studio yeah. hi-fi rush was made quickly and pretty cheaply i had to imagine <laughs> and you guys yeah. just threw them out you know it's just i i just don't understand and it's also like you want high priority titles okay you 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 don't get that with one game not really one one hi-fi rush isn't gonna make hi-fi rush on the same level as a god of war a fucking you know name a big franchise right it's not gonna put it there you need multiple sequels you need to build that franchise you need to market it you need to do all that shit right I think they're thinking of like Fallout, Elder Scrolls, Call of Duty, Halo, Gears, Forza. That's probably all they're really looking at right now. And that sucks. Yeah. <laughs> and that oh. sucks. That sucks for Game Pass. That sucks for Xbox. That, that, that sucks all around. And what does that mean about like that second tier, which is like Doom and like um, Wolfenstein, that kind of like level? Uh, of stuff it's like all right what are you what are you what are we doing i guess they have minecraft as well maybe i could put minecraft in that top uh thing maybe sea of thieves but like that's still that's what like eight games that they're gonna be okay that's the thing you're focusing on so again i'm gonna keep asking the question like what are we really doing here and like, what are we doing here that is not enough you will not have enough of those games to go around to support game pass to keep people coming yeah. back month after month after month for game pass to keep those subscriptions up going up and keep the people that already are subscribed to stay subscribed right those those, those are not enough for that People will be like, I mean, I do it. Shit, I, I cancel my Game Pass all the fucking time. You know, every time yeah. I'm done playing a game. It's you like, always do that with all your subscriptions. Yeah, I do that with all my subscriptions. Months, and there's, there's millions of people like that. It is so hard to keep people on one subscription when there are so many other subs things you have to subscribe to out there. And, and especially games. And it's like, you, you know, I'm not even, uh, me and you, we're, we're way different than other gamers. Most people are just playing one game, right? Yeah, and they Call of Duty, consistently Fortnite. play that one game. And <laughs> now head. they're they're considering not putting Call of Duty on Game Pass. And it's like, what was the fucking point then? You know, so I think so that this is that. Yeah, again, I'm going to keep saying, what are we really doing here? So what I'm going to I'm, I'm going to propose this. So we keep seeing the direction they're going now, right? Which I don't necessarily think is a bad thing. Like they're going to go maybe more third party, um, you know, rely on their cloud stuff and things like that. It's a bad thing if we're not getting the smaller games. Yeah. You know, you don't just want Halo and Call of Duty. And I don't even know if they consider Halo a fucking top priority now. You know, I would assume so. Eh, maybe, maybe it's got because if Halo is not, I think yours is not. So 
I could see a world where Gears surpasses Halo, right? Like, I could see Gears 6 being bigger than Halo Infinite, for sure. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah, it's think, a tough one. I, yeah. It doesn't matter. I, I'm just saying I could see a world where it's like it's even higher level than you're thinking. Like they, they really only consider COD and Minecraft, <laughs> you know, like their yeah. their main priorities because those are the things really yeah. bringing yeah. in money, right? That's true. Uh or Candy Crush. <laughs> um Yeah. Uh I guess what I, my question was going to be is we kind of seeing their direction. So my thing is what now? So what now? Number one, I'm gonna, I said this before when we talked about the the third party stuff. Rip that bandaid off now. We don't need another. We don't need the Xbox handheld. We don't need a, a, a next gen Xbox. Like if you guys are that bad, if it is that bad there, stop making hard work because you're losing money. And you're gonna if you're gonna do it, you're gonna do it. So rip the bandaid off now. Be a cloud thing. If you still want to have stuff. In an ecosystem, you have cloud. You I, you can do it on a Samsung TV. You can you know do it on your phone, stuff like that, or your PC. They have a lot of PC stuff. But just be third party then. Let's just do it. Just rip it off. Why wait? What's the point of waiting if you're going to keep shutting these people down? Maybe you could save them if you're not spending money on hardware. Yeah. Maybe. I mean, I don't know. It's just like, I kind of think they're looking at it from like, okay, can we make money from all these angles then? You know, can we make a little bit of money through the consoles, a little bit of money through Game Pass, a little bit of money through whatever else, right? Game and, sales. Yeah, and they're just like, anything that's not making at least a little bit of money, we just close. Is is that the idea there? Because that's a very sad idea, but that, that might kind of be what they're going for, right? It's like, I'm sure Hi-Fi Rush didn't bring in any money, but it's like, Again, you need those things to. Could have, we, could have they just to, to spun these people off? Pass. That's another like question, did right? Bob? Exactly. Yep. Yep. That's I. I thought of that as well the other day. Is like, why couldn't Tango GameWorks spin off like that? It's like this is why. I mean, second party is so much better than fucking getting acquired by a. But if you want something exclusive for your console, exclusive for your subscription service, please Pay just go second. Game. Please just go second party, right? It's because it's just so much safer at this point. It's like anytime there's an acquisition now, I'm going to be. Yeah, worried. you're getting your money still. And you're making your game. You're getting your money. You're making the game. Get out. Yeah. They get their exclusive game. Cool. Uh, and then, then you can go off and sign with another publisher for your next game or sign with the same publisher for your sequel or, or whatever. At least they don't own you to the point where they're going to shut you down. And I think before a lot of these higher, higher ups at these studios were thinking like, oh, OK, we, if Microsoft acquires us, we will now always have that 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 safe bed. Right. To to you know we can always fall back on that if our next game isn't successful yeah it's like at least we're owned at that point by microsoft who's the third richest company in the fucking world but yet they still got to shut down these smaller studios they can't can't afford that you know god forbid one of our executives takes a little bit of a pay cut a pay cut enough that could probably fucking pay for one of these studios for an entire year you know <laughs> like god Easily. forbid we fucking do that we're fucking microsoft here but Nah, let's uh let's shut them down and lose hundreds of jobs instead, and make fun hundreds of people have to either exit the game industry entirely or go find different jobs. Yeah, like you can't spin off Arcane. Uh, like they're one of the bigger studios in Austin, aren't they? Yeah, <laughs> like them and like there's a Bioware team down like there. Arcane right? I mean, you really got to feel for Arcane Austin, too, because it's like, yeah, Redfall, it, it failed. It flopped, They were forced to make a live service game. Yeah, they didn't want it, exactly. And it's like when Bethesda made that decision, they were seeing all the all the money coming in on live service games. I don't I don't know when that game probably started development. When did it come out? 2023. So it probably started, what, 2018, 2019-ish? Yeah, this right is around the, there. This is the uh, Prey team. So that was yeah. 2017? That was 2017. So probably after that. Um, and I get it. It's like they tried the live service thing. A lot of developers have tried the live service thing. They want to get that hit, that constant flow of money coming in. That way they can go off and make things they actually like. But, you know, and it just didn't work out. And we've seen tons of these live service games not work out. But they made a great game in Prey right before that. You know, it's like, okay, I'll let them go back and, again, make content for Game Pass. Make a good single-player immersive game that 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 they're known for and and like it, yeah you still got arcane leon but it, i don't know you also had austin there too you know and arcane leon moving on to the blade game it's like okay cool they could have handled this honored then arcane austin what, what right? a talented team austin was I, yeah they, i guess they had a lot of turnover but that team was very talented they could be doing something else you're not going to give them another chance because they made one bad game yeah or you're just trying to cut costs and they made a bad game so cut them 
Yeah. That just doesn't make any sense. I'm kind of at the point now where I like Xbox a lot. It's a, it's a, it's an ecosystem I like. I think their cloud service stuff is a lot better than PlayStation's, especially how their cloud system works and stuff. The controllers, the be- they have the best controller around. But I'm kind of at the point when do I even really want to even buy another Xbox, any game on Xbox? I have a huge library. I probably have like 800 and like 60 games, 70 games, something like that, 870 games owned or whatever. Um, I'd like to just, how about give me a refund now? You ain't getting no refund. <laughs> now, but give me a refund, and then I'll just take that money and I'll buy games elsewhere. Yeah, that ain't gonna happen. <laughs> it, how about also just put Steam on everything? I'll just use Steam. Yeah, I, I mean, good luck with that. It, but I might just that. be buying stuff on PlayStation now. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it, it's tough, right? Because it's like, you know, I see a bunch of people like, oh, I'm canceling my Game Pass subscription. I'm, yeah, you know who they're it. gonna take that out on, though? the other small studios they're not they're probably they were if you if you see the they 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 might be doing more cost cost yeah uh, cost cutting um it's like they're they're probably going to do that no matter what if, if people cancel game pass but you know what do it at this point like if you don't like what they're doing cancel it i mean so now like, i that, like, i really worry for, for the other small studios outside of the Bethesda section because this was only Bethesda. Yeah. studios and they probably look at that as a separate thing right now so i'm really worried for the smaller studios that fit in the same vein as tango gameworks did that are Pulsion. under proper xbox Compulsion, ninja theory double fine i i really worry for all those. don't even t- bring, i mean i I, ho- I was hoping you didn't say those words today oh dude, do not bring up dude double if fine, they shut down I double will... fine it's the same thing too in between projects right now jason Schreier made a big thing about that in that article is that they were in between projects and that's particularly why they were looked at to to cut down on it's because they weren't putting out a game anytime soon so it's like i'm gonna eh. lose my mind i don't know man you know i worry like ninja theory after hellblade 2 comes out okay they're gonna be they're gonna be looking at you you know it's like uh that's that's kind of rough even something like machine games man like if that indiana jones game isn't successful for them and who knows like it could not be the game looks great don't get me wrong but indiana jones isn't a big property right now by any means with the kids and shit so it's like i I don't know i could even see a studio that size getting shut down by them now hopefully not hopefully this is the end like please microsoft don't don't shut down any more studios because you need these studios you need people to make games you are a games maker xbox is a games brand what the fuck are we doing i think chris said something really interesting that really struck a chord with me on on sacred symbols is um a lot and, and it goes into all these developers that are shutting down studios and canceling projects and doing layouts and all this stuff it's like they'll get it you know a, a game will be mildly successful and the company will make you know 20 million 50 million dollars or whatever and granted that's not a lot of money to them but what the fuck are we doing you guys are games makers like what the fuck does it matter if it's only 50 million dollars being brought in that's still 50 million more dollars you guys wouldn't have had i can understand if a game yeah. is losing money right that it profits that much yeah but yeah. like if the profits only enough to keep the studio open and then maybe give them some bonuses and shit god forbid isn't that what isn't that what we're here for yeah <laughs> what are we doing then okay great you guys get awesome games right you might not be making a ton of money off them but they're you're at least making enough money to cover these things but with that they're building the brand exactly you're building the brand which will lead to more money later on so what the yeah. fuck are we doing if, if that's not enough you guys are just expecting so much money to come in i just like i hate this argument that the, everything's got to make hundreds of millions of dollars now yeah it, it's just not the and way the thing it, is it's not just xbox no I it's not I, I am saying everyone yeah. yeah it's everyone like, everyone's like it's not enough we you know? we really need you know you see like hasbro just uh poured like a billion dollars in or something to making triple a games or something like that or korea you know there was a Someone from Korea was talking about getting more into console games and stuff like that. And it's like, and I know Sony published uh, Stellar Blade and st- I don't know who published Liza P and stuff like that. But it's like, we really need to support those type of things because the money has to come from somewhere, you know? Like the money has to come from somewhere to make these games. So there always needs to be publishers and people that want to put money into creativity and making these big AAA games and stuff like that that we love we all really need to start supporting like companies like that, like new companies that are coming in to publish things like that. Cause like if so, if Sony and Microsoft are only looking at making hundreds of millions of dollars, we need to start supporting the guys that are looking to make way less than that, you know? 
And we're really only going to find that in like the double A in, in indie space. Yeah. For the most part, you know, like we're going to have to su- just support this much smaller games. Say that kind of this is more of what we want, you know? Yeah. Crazy, man. So, yeah, I, I mean, I, I don't know what else we can say. I mean, how do you think Phil feels? You know, it's because I see a lot of people calling for his job and stuff. And it's like, I just don't I, I don't want to defend him. Move. Unfortunately for Phil, he is the face of Xbox, you know. So like you do get a lot of a lot of hate and a lot of the scrutiny and stuff. It, a lot of it is earned uh, it really because you are the face of the company. I'm sure he doesn't he didn't want to do this. I could see a world where Phil was fighting tooth and nail to keep Tango open at least, you know. I but and it just didn't work with the Microsoft execs. I could see a world where he's heartbroken right now. I I really could. And it's like I I know it sounds like bullshit because it's like uh, you know, this dude's just an executive. He's just a face of a company. But it's like, man, he really does seem like a good guy when you when you listen to him in interviews and stuff. He really does seem like he cares about games and he wanted to take Xbox in a good direction. And I just feel like his plan's getting thrown out the window here. And like I I don't really it's hard like I don't want to defend him, but it's just like I I do feel for him a little bit cuz I don't think he he wanted this. Yeah, I I'm also not defending executives cuz I just like why would I? But I do want to say that it's probably much harder to make these type of calls than we would than we think because we're on the other side and we're looking at like, man, they just laid off so many people, you know. But making those calls is tough. Like, I guarantee you, Microsoft was like, we need this many jobs cut, and we need to start finding where to cut them. And it's like, well, that's a top down thing, you know, whether that's Satya. Nadella saying that or someone other else in the Microsoft C suite, you know, like the the costs were gonna be cut no matter what. I think I guess the Xbox team tried to make the uh the cuts where they think that they could, you know. If I'm Phil like, that's sad to even say that. If I'm Phil, I am never doing another interview type thing again. I am not putting my face out he there. He is anymore. doing one. Next I know week. he is, but like after the uh the the showcase, and he's certainly gonna be asked difficult questions through he's that and stuff. IGN but thing. like, I am pulling way back. Like you, you could totally see why Nintendo and PlayStation are way more not putting faces There's out no there face and anymore, having not yeah. there. Yeah, you could totally see that now because because Phil just looks stupid. I've seen so many clips of things Phil has said in the past that just go against this whole thing like we want to power our smaller teams to create smaller projects so we can have uh you know a more critical success in with a smaller that game kind and of stuff interview. like that yeah. yeah the kind of funny interview and all that type of stuff and it just it goes back on so many things that phil said and you guys just made him look stupid and i think maybe, that's microsoft making him look stupid exactly I, it's I like say. you guys just really made him look dumb you made matt booty look dumb you all that type of stuff and it's just yeah, you know, a, a part of them's got to be pissed off right now because it, it, it's just taking back so many things that they have said in the past. Yeah, yeah, making them look like hypocrites. Mm-hmm. Well, <sighs> we can move on to the next story. I'm gonna go get more coffee real quick. Okay. I need more coffee after this because um, my blood's boiling a little bit. Mm. It's rough. It's rough. It's moving in the fun world of PlayStation. PlayStation has reversed their decision to require Helldivers 2 on PC to create a P- or Helldivers 2 players on PC to create a PSN account to play the game. Sony tried to introduce this last week, but quickly got bullied to change course, and they said that they are still learning what is best for their PC players. Daniel's not here. Uh, this is very interesting. So this popped off kind of in the middle of last week. I can't remember the exact date, but so PlayStation is introducing this whole PSN thing that's going to be an overlay on their PlayStation games that are on PC. And so that would have required PC players to then make a PSN account so that they could sign in and play Helldivers 2 that way. And it would have been required for all PC players to do that to play Helldivers 2. Uh, Daniel, I can't remember when this popped off last week, when it, when it kind of started, kind of middle of last yeah, week. Yeah, it was like towards the end of last week, I think. Yeah. Because it was yeah. after the sh- after you guys did the show last week. Yeah. So it was like either Thursday or Friday. Or Thursday like or Friday. They tried to introduce this thing. Quickly got bullied off uh, from doing it to the PC audience. No one wants, no one wants to do th- No one. Ha- everyone hates linking any account anywhere. The only time that people will do it is if there's like a cross-save thing or like a cross-play thing. 
like with like Call of Duty or something. Like people will do it for that, but it's like they it's because they're forced to do that. But no one wants to link an account. Are you kidding me? Yeah, very uh, very odd choice to to force anyone to do that. It's interesting with this whole thing, man. It's like PlayStation, you, you got something with Helldivers too here. You really do. Uh, highest selling game of the year right now. I think uh, Matt Piscatella said last week. Is it number one? Wow. It's number one. It's the highest selling. He said even if you take just the ps5 players or just the pc players it is still the highest selling game of the year so it's the mm. highest selling game of the year and then some at this point granted there's things like power world and stuff out there that are in early access that oh, still yeah. might be uh the the highest sold thus far but i'm trying to think of what else would even be up there yeah as a full games that are out right now hell divers 2 is far and away the highest seller and this is exactly what playstation's been looking for with live service games you know i hate this um I hate this argument that they're like looking for more than this. I think not... that they probably are. No, but I get it. They're looking for enough. a Fortnite and stuff, but it's like, yeah. dude, you guys are lucky to get this in, yeah. in, yeah. in the live service space. You know, you guys are for extremely sure. lucky just to get this. Like, you should be happy with just this at this point because uh, it, I, I never thought they'd even have a hit like this in the live service space, if I'm being honest. Uh, and so they got one here. You you guys got one. So you have to treat it very delicately now. You know, you have to do everything you can to increase that player base and keep it going, keep it rolling, keep the content rolling and all that. Because you got one. You got exactly... This is, this is exactly what Jim Ryan envisioned. <laughs> you know? Oh, don't... No, we can't bring Jim. Oh, we're bringing old Jimmy back. You know, can't this is... Jim, Jim Jim's somewhere in a fucking mansion just uh, just crying his eye out, looking, looking at the Helldivers 2 players. He's like, this was my dream all along. This is exactly what he wanted. So, yeah. Uh, I guess I don't really have too much more to say on it. I'm not... Uh, I haven't played Helldivers 2. I don't really care. And uh, it's not, like, one of those things that, like, particularly was that interesting to me. But, uh, yeah, it's just... I just think good on them for going back on it i don't know how much it damaged the player base already i'm sure there's a lot of those fucking pc trolls are uh pissed off now <laughs> or whatever but uh you know i don't know if if this did any uh long lasting damage to hell divers too probably did a little bit but uh good you on assume, them for going back at least you assume it have to be some yeah. but how much and how long i i can't really say but yeah you would assume it have to be at least a little bit yeah Anything else you got to say on this? I just, yeah, it's if PlayStation is trying their best to like get into this PC realm. And I think they need to kind of take notes of what other people do more and what, what PC players like and don't like, because it's a different audience than like console PlayStation players, you know, like the PC players like things differently. They like different games. They, they do like typical AAA games, but I don't think that they're all looking for cinematic third person action games that PlayStation is really known for. Like, I'm sure they like those, but if you go look at a lot of the PC games that pop off, like they're not all like third person cinematic action games, you know? Not not even close. You yeah. Know? None of them really. <laughs> like yeah. I guess Elden Ring, but uh, I mean that's not even really in that category that much. Yeah, exactly. So it's like, yeah, so it just take more notes on what PC players want. The like, PC and... kids, they don't they don't like doing anything. They don't want else. to even go on. They, they want to click on store. Steam and that's yeah. it. That's it. That's all they want to do. Yeah. It's like you introduce any other thing blocking that, they they get pissed off. Nope. So yep. it's like, all right, don't fuck with them, I guess, because mm -hmm. uh, they will uh, they will rain their internet wrath upon you. Uh, all right. Cool. Well, uh, our next news story. Then let's move over to the fun world of Nintendo. Uh, Ooh, very fun. During the recent earnings call, Nintendo finally confirmed their next console exists, specifically referring to it as the Nintendo Switch successor. But we will have to wait a little bit longer to hear about what the console actually is. Nintendo also confirmed that we will be having a, another Nintendo Direct sometime in June. Uh, but the console will not be at the June Direct. Hmm. So we'll yeah, I wouldn't there. expect it. Yeah. Especially if it's not coming out this year. You know? Yeah, what, what are we thinking there with the next console it seems like it's going to come out in early march same time the uh, first switch came out or whatever we're yeah. end up calling this so it seems like early march next year so uh, when are you thinking this console actually ends up getting revealed uh i think we were talking about this like earlier this year i think that they will probably especially when we knew that they're, it's probably not hitting this year i think they'll probably do a similar marketing cycle to the first switch or 
the original Switch? I don't know how... Because I don't think this is going to be a sequel console. I think that they're looking at this like how they have the light, the regular Switch, and the OLED, and then this is going to be a little bit more powerful. But I don't think this is going to be a sequel console, a new generation. I think this is going to be just the same generation. The, the Switch family of consoles, I think is what they've been calling their stuff. Um, but I think it's going to be the similar marketing. So maybe April, or not April, uh, uh, October. I don't know why I said April. October as I think when that first switch got revealed. So probably somewhere later in the year, they'll probably like reveal it in like a trailer or something. And then big direct to the beginning of the year, just for the console, maybe January. Then it comes out in March. Yeah. Yeah. I'm kind of with you on all that. I disagree with the, uh, it's not going to be a proper switch to console type thing. I think it is. I think it's going to be a different generation. I think they call it anything else. You're, you're, you are risking having a Wii U situation again. Uh, you know, yeah, you but the Switch already isn't the Wii U. No, I understand that, but you are risking people not going out and buying the new thing because they think it is the same thing as the old thing. Oh, you want the Nintendo what about Switch? A Switch Pro? You want see? You want a Switch Pro? Oh, little Timmy, you already have a Nintendo Switch. You don't. You don't need a Switch Pro. You know, without the parents knowing that that is the next console and their exclusive no, games only, for that console. I fully agree with you. My only, like, like, looking at it the other way is, like, how many people understand that with the iPhone? Sure, but what do like, they call the iPhone? Mark. It's usually a pro. They have a pro version. Yes, but not everyone goes out and buy the pro. They'll go out and buy the 12, right? Or the 13. Yeah. Not yeah. everyone upgrades year after year. I was just pro. more looking at, like, mass market audiences still understand that there's, like, a pro, and it's, like, the levels i think even in oh little little samantha little 12 year old samantha wants a new phone oh okay we'll we'll wait for the 14 to come out we'll come out we'll wait for the 14 to come out because you don't need the pro max version samantha you know what are you gonna do samantha go on tiktok you need a pro for that (laughs) she's gonna go on tiktok and cry about her parents not buying her the pro max (laughs) fucking 37 or whatever let me see those instagram stories you complaining about your your parents (laughs) uh I like the name. Uh, yeah. coming up with. I think Super Switch uh, is what I think it should be called. Yeah. And then you risk being associated with Nazis See, my, with, with my, SS. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, we can't have the SS console. Um, <laughs> I think my only thing against the name of calling it Switch Two is Nintendo has never done that. Yeah, they've never done. They have never done a sequel console like that. So I know. I would but... say they will never call something a two. Yeah. Yeah. No, you're Even right. Even as successful as the Switch is, I don't. I just don't think that's the right name. Uh, how about this one? Switch sixty four. Let's go. Oh my god! Super <laughs> Switch sixty four. Super Let's Switch sixty four. That's even better. Yeah. SS sixty four. I like it. I like Give it. Give me those colors too, like like N sixty four colors and stuff. Like the buttons yeah. be the colors and yeah, yeah, very colorful console. Yeah, I'm I'm super interested to see how they're gonna handle this whole thing with the yeah, names and all that. Yeah, I can't I can't wait to see how the actual rollout goes. I also don't think it's a new going to be a new gen just because I think like they're going to want this gen to be the number one. I know that they're not saying any of this and it's usually just us type people who are saying this kind of stuff about sales of consoles. Yeah. But like they want the Switch family of consoles to be number one. Guaranteed. So they updated their sales numbers as well. Switch is a little over 141 million. I still think it'll get there even mm-hmm. if it is a Switch 2. I still think the so last... Switch got such a long tail. Yeah, I think... You knock that shit down to like a hundred dollars or whatever the fuck at some point. They're gonna one hundred and fifty. People are gonna yeah. come and fucking and they'll start flying off the shelves again. You know, it's like I know. Granted, they did slow down drastically with switch sales. There, it was like a little over. It was almost at one hundred forty. So they they only sold uh, like one point three million switches in the last quarter. You're seeing the slowdown. They're seeing the slowdown too. Of course, you know, 140 million of them are out there, and it's been eight years at this, seven years, whatever, at this point. So, of course, the console sales are going to start slowing down a little bit. It's a lot of consoles, though. Yeah, that's so many. It's like who doesn't own one at this point, right? So, or yeah. two. Yeah. <laughs> or two. Shit, I bought three. I've literally bought three switches. <laughs> that's right. You got your scrolling. You got to yeah. buy a new one. I bought one before one? that. Um, oh, think... there was one before that. Yeah, there was one before that. There was one before that as well. So, yeah, I, I've bought three myself so uh Crazy. yeah um yeah and then uh they updated some other numbers as well i can't remember specifics but i know princess peach and mario donkey kong game that both came out this year both already sold over a million copies That's so good awesome. for them yeah, yeah awesome to see games. princess uh, peach was a, was a fun game 
I really enjoyed that game. That's yeah. a great game. Yeah, cool. And then, uh, yeah, there was nothing else that was super noticeable in the in the sales. Of course, you know, Tears of the Kingdom's over twenty million. Mario Kart, of course, fucking sixty something million. I I don't want to rehash our topic from that we talked about for so long. You know who does everything right and makes games right, even though we kind of criticize them sometimes? Is Nintendo. They budget their games right. They don't take forever to make them. Sometimes they'll just make it and sit on it. And then they'll put it out when they need to. Like, maybe, hey, Xbox and PlayStation, maybe look at what Nintendo does. Budget the games better. Take care of your developers. And don't let them make the game for way longer than it needs to be. I agree on all of that. They do take a while to make their games, though. It's it, Some games. it is just disguised by the fact that everything's just under Nintendo. You know, everything's just called Nintendo. It, like the teams are all called Nintendo. Yeah. If PlayStation or Xbox just called all their teams Xbox or PlayStation, it would feel similar, I think. Yes, but I think I, I do like think Tears of but, the Kingdom still took six years, right? That, that's one of the only things that did take that long. Mario like, three Mario, games. we haven't it's been seven years, right? It's uh, yeah. it's uh, but there's Metroid not, Prime. It's I I'm just there's holes yeah. to poke in that. There's holes to poke for sure. I just think that the majority of their teams put out games pretty quick. Yeah. Or under the banner of Nintendo, they just put out a lot of games very quickly. Yeah, I mean, you look at Game Freak, right? They put out a game every other fucking week, right? Quality <laughs> or not. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big asterisk. Yeah. It doesn't matter what they call it. It doesn't matter. Hey, game. it's coming out that day. We don't give a fuck. The games, all their games are selling better than any other PlayStation okay. game. <laughs> anything. Anything. It's crazy. Crazy, man. Whoa. Uh, so yeah. Oh yeah, and then the direct in June. What are we thinking is going to pop up at this direct in June? So gotta be Metroid. Gotta be Metroid, right? It's like Wait, Jeff. At the end of the year, right? Yeah, Jeff Grubb. I mean, kind of reported that he said he heard oh, did he? Okay. something. He did a while ago. He said um, he heard something Metroid might be coming out around around that time. So hey, they're teeing up for Metroid Prime Four this fall. I think. I think because uh, they kind of have to put that on regular nintendo switch if the next switch is a proper switch too and there's exclusive games for all that and stuff right so it yeah. still kind of has to come out on this switch right so well uh, how do we think that's going to work so do we do we think that so i think it's going to be obvious switch now is going to be able to all the games will be playable on the new one right it has do we think to, that, yeah do we think there's going to be a new 3ds type thing where like you're not going to be able to play any there's like a couple things that you're not going to be able to play over here oh i'd be disappointed if it wasn't okay so you think, yeah, it's like, oh, whatever. Metro if, Prime 4 is too powerful. We can't play it over here, right? Yeah, Something 100%. Like okay. If they they do launch with the 3D Mario on the next thing, I'd be a little disappointed if it still was able to run on the last Switch, personally. But if they want to do sales, they might as well just make it playable both always. Yeah, but you got to sell your console somehow, right? That's why you put it on everything. To keep the regular Switch selling, you know? Sure, but it would force people on this Switch to... I mean, it's the yeah, console... Yeah, if they want to do that. It's the yeah. classic console market, right? It's like, hey, yeah. you gotta, you have to go buy this new version of the Switch to to play the new Mario game. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. I'll be very interested. I could see a world where Metro Prime 4 comes out this fall, and then there's also a Switch 2 version of the game, you know? Oh, that could be Maybe scary. it doesn't run at 60 or whatever on the Switch, and the Switch 2 is able to make it run at 60 or something like that. I don't know, but... uh. Yeah, I could see a world where that happens. I think. Yeah, what else is going to be here? Yeah, I mean, I, I, uh, at the direct. So, yeah. I, I mean, the the last thing that has just been rumored for years now is Zelda the ports? yeah the Zelda ports win right there in the Twilight <laughs> oh Princess, God. right? It's like it's got <laughs> if it's win. if it's gonna happen, it's got to be now. You know, it's got to be at this direct. I think I can see that coming out in like September or whatever, and then maybe, maybe Metro Prime Four. July. Like the early game? Yeah, yeah, maybe July, August would be a good time for that too, and then maybe October, November is Metro Prime Four. That sounds like a pretty good. That's a that's a really good send off switch, especially yeah. with that game. Like send it off with that game. Yeah, because that was you, they showed off Metro Prime Four early when yeah. the switch was was that twenty eighteen or something, or was that twenty seventeen? Yeah, um, I forget when that was. Twenty seventeen must have been. It was twenty seventeen. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So yeah, they announced that game, and then yeah, let's send off the switch with that game. And yeah. finally getting the Zelda ports? Come on. Yeah. I think that's a really good thing. It's just like, man, we're going to look back at the Switch's catalog. Just like, wow, it's going to be. I guess Switch 2, it, 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 presuming it's backwards compatible, will be even better. But, uh, yeah, like, man, what a catalog for Nintendo Switch, yeah. you know? Because not only do they have amazing Switch games, Switch Switch games, but they also like, eh, we're going to port and update all the Wii U games that 
didn't yeah. sell in order to put them on the Switch too. Yeah. So they they're kind of like brand new games to a lot of people, you know. And then so many like classic games from the PS2 and 360 eras, right, are on there now too. You know, like Resident Evil 4 and all that. Portal games, you know, those are all on there. It's just like what a fucking catalog the Nintendo yeah. Switch. Or even has. they're online. The Nintendo Online. Oh yeah. Has the a lot. N64 games, stuff. NES games, stuff like Game Boy Advance games, all that stuff. I hope all that carries over too. I'm assuming it all will. But uh. Yeah, we need. They need to. They need to be crisp. I know that Nintendo can be a little vague sometimes. They need to be crystal clear on, yeah e even if it's not they need to just say it they need to like what is happening yeah. like am i going to be able to take my tears of the kingdom cartridge and put that into this new thing mm, that's a good question yeah you know what i mean yeah because are they going to keep the cartridges probably is it going to be kind of similar and i could just plug it in kind of like a with like the ds you were able to put advanced games in there or yeah. game boy games in there yeah, yeah, yeah like if you could just do that that's cool perfect but be like i said Crystal clear, Nintendo. Tell me exactly what we're going to be able to do. It's going to be a, a bulky attattachment thing that you have to put on oh, your Switch oh, to a make a thing. Yeah. <laughs> it like weighs the, like 20 um, pounds when you're holding it. <laughs> you, ever, you see, like, the, the there was this video going around, I think it was this past week, where, like, somebody had the Game Boy, and they were putting all the plugins to the Game Boy. Yeah, I've seen those. <laughs> the yeah. light and, like, the, the magnifying glass. Yeah, those, that shit's funny, what you could do to So wild. And the GameCube, man. There's so many yeah. weird attachments the attachment, for the, the GameCube. Game Boy Advance yeah. thing you put you can make the GameCube a fucking tower with just different attachments. <laughs> uh, was it the Genesis that also had that? You put like yeah, the thing yeah, on the top. Yeah, they had the CD everything. thing. Yeah, all that. Wild. Yeah. What are these companies thinking? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. The 90s was a crazy time, man. The 90s are wild. <laughs> yeah. uh, all right. Well, Nintendo, looking forward to your June Direct. We'll see what, what comes from all that. Next up, then. Remedy has officially canceled its multiplayer project to focus on other games. Also, and Tencent has increased the stake in the company to 14%. Daniel, this came out, uh, I think the Tencent news came out a couple weeks ago. And then now this week came out that the long rumored multiplayer project that we've or I guess it's not even rumored. They can yeah, rumor themselves four player? forever ago. Yeah, a four-player thing that was supposed to take place in the Control Universe. Yeah. Uh, we've been talking about it for we've heard years this at this years point. Ago. Yeah, yeah, a yeah, very long time. And uh seems like they are officially moving away from that. I think it's great. That's a good idea. I, I don't think anyone really wants a multiplayer thing this from, from cool Remedy. Cool, but I don't know if I necessarily... The only cool it. thing about it to me was that it's in the Control Universe, yes. and you could see how that would work. Maybe you're a bunch of different agents for the... Uh, Federal Bureau, whatever the hell it was called. Uh, uh, Federal Bureau of... Yeah, paranormal activities. I, uh, nah, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Something like I can't, that. Yeah, I can't. Yeah, I can't remember what it was. Investigation, maybe? Isn't that just FBI? That's FBI. I'm wrong. Don't, don't listen to me. Yeah, Federal Bureau of Investigation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. don't, don't. <laughs> That's what they're trying to do. Anyways. Uh, yeah, oh, that's FBC. Federal Bureau of FBC, Control. There you go. Right? Yeah, you got, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. That's it. Um, so, yeah. The multiplayer project officially canceled. I think it's a good idea. I don't think anyone really wanted a multiplayer project from Remedy anyways. I think we all yeah. just kind of want to see Remedy do what they do. And, and I think, yeah. And that's, that's I think that's what I was going to say is like, I think that this just said, this is Remedy, I think, looking to the future. And they are, they don't want to lay people off. You know, they want to start, they want to like do what we do best. Yeah. And at like, the budget that they do best right like we see their budgets like they like maybe their sales aren't exactly what they should be like alan wake 2 like go buy alan wake 2 that game's a masterpiece one of our favorite games last year one of the best games of the generation right um they their budgets for the games are really not that high because i think it's probably where they're at too it's like cost of living's not too bad yeah stuff like that in finland but they know how to budget their games properly and in single player they know how to do that i think maybe in a multiplayer setting that's probably a little tougher for them so maybe they were seeing these couple of years of them making it like this might be a, this might be us pushing it for yeah. how well our games sell you know so I, I also go back to just what naughty dog said about canceling the last of us multiplayer thing yeah. is that it would have changed the entire studio if we were dedicated to this live service thing and granted we don't know if this was necessarily going to be a live service game but it didn't it, seem like it, but yeah, yeah it could have been. I don't know for how long they were working on it for. I, maybe it was. I don't know. It's it, it's tough to tell. I guess we'll never know. But it's those things really do change your studio over time. And it's like, okay, you guys love making these single player high action 
sometimes horror games, right? It's like, okay, are you guys going to be able to do that if you're constantly supporting a live service control game? I don't know. Probably not. You're going to need to spin off a whole separate team. You're going to, it's going to be a money sink. It's going to have its ups and downs. Imagine if it didn't launch well, then you had to fucking ramp up from there and try to make it a good thing. Eventually three years later, it's very good. But then the player count dips and stuff like that. It's just the ups and downs these live service games take. It's absolutely insane. It just seems like such a money sink at a certain point. So yeah, I'm glad Remedy is, is stepping away from this. They got enough projects going on as it is. Control 2, the Max Payne 1 and 2 remakes. So I'm glad yeah, they're just going to focus all their efforts on that. I agree. I think that they, I think that we all want them to do what they do best, even if they're not selling as well as they should be. So, yeah. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Me too. And I, th I, I think maybe the Max Payne 1 and 2 could be pretty breakout successful. You know? Uh, yeah. Especially if it looks good. If it, if it looks yeah. like Alan oh, Wake 2. Oh, dude. If it looks like Alan Wake 2, and it's like, oh, I think tons of people will jump off that. Max Payne, a bit of a name, you know, not it's just like going to be a little snappy your feelings. Days. Yeah, you know? but like make a cool action game. I could see that selling like three, four million copies. You know, it's like granted, I think Alan Wake Two will probably get up there at a certain point. Maybe I know they're. I, That's I how think, Control was, right? Yeah, yeah. Remember, Control slow. did not sell well to start. Yeah, and then maybe I don't know. Maybe it leads it's into deals going, getting to yeah. the five, six million copies sold type of thing. It's like I'm sure that's the area they want to be. That kind of Resident Evil space where it sells like seven million copies in a year or whatever. Yeah, I, I think they kind of want to be right around there, and that would be great. But uh, you know, you kind of gotta build your way to that a little bit more. Yeah, they're probably making that DLC, and then probably gonna drop the price around there and do like an ultimate edition yeah. or something like that. That's that's probably how they're gonna do it. I think that's what Control did too, right? They like yeah. made like that DLC and kind of bundled it and dropped the price. So yeah, unfortunately, um, I do think for Alan Week Two in particular, I think not being physical is also hurting it. You know, it could like, even it, a little bit. Yeah, it still matters at right now in 2024. It still matters a little bit. Obviously, we're leading more and more into just digital only, but I still it does matter in today's age still that that you're on physical, for, for that you're on shelves. You know that people can go into fucking Walmart or whatever and see Alan Week Two on display there and like oh i wonder what that is oh, i'd be in a horror game right now you know so and then that sells copies that way yeah all right well we'll see 10 cent 14 percent steak that's it just got their hands on oh their tentacles now. are everywhere they're everywhere man <laughs> we need to i don't know i don't know every, how we can really every developer that. can be traced back to uh 10 cent you can at this point <laughs> yeah it but they're everywhere, man. Crazy. Unless like unless they go under somehow. I don't know how that, that would be. Who that knows? might be that might be like shaking to the industry if they go under just for how many like investments they have. They own. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean every I mean I'm saw uh on Epic. The Epic, yeah. Epic themselves. <laughs> they yeah. own a big portion of Epic. Crazy. <laughs> PlayStation? Uh, Aren't they invested in PlayStation? Yeah, someone there's there's somehow There's like together. some weird stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, they both own part of From Saw, so I don't know, mm -hmm, maybe that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I don't know. All right, next up then, uh, Batman Arkham Shadow has officially been announced exclusively for MetaQuest 3. This isn't being developed by Rocksteady. This is being developed by, let me click in here. They have the name. Uh, What is the name? Cam Camelage? Cam Camoulage? Is their name? <laughs> Do you want me to look at it? <laughs> C A M O U L A G J. Let me click in. Don't know their name. Never heard of these guys at all. But yeah, the guy. That's how, yeah, that's, yeah, that's how I'd say it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Weird name. Kind of cool, actually. I kind of like it. I like the sound yeah. of it. Yeah. Um, the guy that did the voice for Batman for Batman Arkham Origins is returning to voice Batman in this. Yeah, isn't that a Sonic voice actor? Is it? Like yeah. Sonic movie voice actor? Or no, like Sonic didn't he voice games? Sonic stuff? Isn't that that same guy? Sonic talks in in recent games. Oh yeah, he talks all the time. He's this guy. I I I, I, he I don't think I'm crazy. I think this is the guy that vo has been voicing Sonic for like almost the entire time Sonic has been a, a voice. Oh my fucking god! All right. I think I think it's the same guy. Yeah, because then Troy was the, was Joker in Origin. Don't don't let fucking Sonic talk. That that'd be my recommendation. I mean, you know what? I'll just I'll make it easier for you. Just don't let Sonic. Yeah. <laughs> Let's just don't get rid it. of Sonic. You need to throw <laughs> Sonic in jail with the guy that made yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Naka in prison with Sonic. They could be in the same cell together. Oh, that'd be annoying. <laughs> <laughs> Good. A little blue hedgehog running around. You all made day. this. This was you. Yeah, and maybe put the Alan Wonderworld thing too in there. Oh, 
<laughs> all in one cell what a nightmare he's in a stray jacket and they're just in there with him <laughs> uh all right so uh batman new vr game yeah it's cool we get three cool vr games like this i i don't know if it's gonna be good the arkham versus back yet again oh yeah I guess I missed it. Is it actually in the Arkham universe? I mean, it's called Batman Arkham, so I'm assuming, but I don't know. Yeah, I guess that's a misleading title if it's not. Yeah, it kind of has to be, I guess. I hope it's Although not. Batman, Batman's dead. No, I don't know. Is he, though? I killed him in Suicide Squad. I still would need to play that game. But isn't that some, like, multiverse thing, too? I don't fucking know. I know, like, I, I'm pretty sure the Batman they killed was the Batman we played as in the arkham games but i, I don't know there game. is a multiverse thing in there so, so i guess yeah. they can just bring him back but uh yeah hmm. yeah i don't have anything interesting to say on this either no it's, <laughs> it's the VR I, don't, I don't really care yeah vr game yeah. i just thought it was cool because I, I you know i like my batman i'm, well, I mean, I'm will your brother play this? right now See, the, 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 that's does, a good question does this uh, interest him like does a single player vr game interest him I, I would say no because he still ago. only plays multiplayer stuff. Oh, okay, okay. He plays like multiplayer VR stuff. Does he tend to just play the same game? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. He's, what what a, game that is generation. that? Um, so he plays the, the big game, and what he does on his YouTube channel is a game called Gorilla Tag. Mm -hmm. It's basically like um, what was the game? That, what did we? What's the name of the game that we played in like, as like a kid? So like when you like tag people and then it's like, oh, you're kind of out or whatever. Yes, yeah. it's not just like regular tag, but it's a little different. So that's basically like that. Your play is like these girls with arms and you're like running and stuff. And you can climb things yeah. and, and it's you're playing like a tag like that. And it's more of like a zombie type thing where like you touch and then you become like the same thing. And then everybody's going after the other people, you know, so it's kind of like that. There's probably other game modes and stuff. But, you know, my cousins a, or my brother is a big um gorilla tag content creator <laughs> i don't know yeah he's got what a space to be in. he's got a, uh, like a hundred thousand subscribers on youtube it's fucking crazy and he's he has like multi multi million view videos on gorilla tag that's awesome yeah good for yeah. him shout out to my brother well there you go batman he's just telling. uh make a tag mode i guess and the kids will be into you Mm -hmm. a little batman tag like a multiplayer tag mode but it's got to be low budget because this game is very like po like po polygonal and stuff okay okay it's got a very particular that style. actually sounds kind of fun he plays batman and like all the bat family and all that shit and you just play tag <laughs> you just play tag <laughs> in gotham you know you just play tag you're like tag joker you know yeah, here, here. Tag it. <laughs> <laughs> i'd play that shit <laughs> Maybe what we about, should never, just um, revolve our podcast around uh, VR tag games. Uh, we could. Seems, seems like Become weird. a Gorilla Tag YouTube channel. <laughs> yeah. Um, do you remember Gotham uh, City Imposters? Yeah. Remember yeah, I game? do. That, yeah, that, yeah, that, yeah. Like, that shooter? 360 arcade 360 game. 360 shooter, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That game was cool. That game was cool. That game was cool. Yeah. Good times, man. 360, man. Greatest console of all time. Go I back said to it. that man. Uh, yeah, I said uh, it. Monday Night Combat. Remember that? Oh, oh yeah, that was, cool that was a Combat. cool game. Love Monday Night Combat. So many cool Xbox Live arcade games back then. Really were, really were. I actually have one that I want to talk about when we get to what we've been playing. Sort of. Little tease. Uh, next up, then Take Two. I shut down Roll Seven and Intercept Games. Roll Seven, of course, the developers of Ali Ali World and Roller Drum, which came out recently, and then. Intercept Games are the developers of Kerbal Space Program. Kerbal Space Program, supposedly they said that that series will still continue some way, some form. So it seems like they'll hand that off to a different developer. Daniel, this almost as disappointing as the fucking Xbox stuff with Roll 7. Breaking my heart here, man. What the fuck are we doing? Ollie Ollie World about? was awesome. <laughs> that was game great. was so fun. And it is the same thing. You know, it is the same thing as it's Microsoft right now. Thing. You guys just... Close, a great critical success, Ali Ali World, they especially. Did two games in one year. One year. They were both awesome. Company, a That's developer with is. great cadence of uh, of putting out games are able to make games fairly quickly and put them out and have high critical success. And you guys are closing them? What the fuck are we doing? Are you kidding me? What? what I'm going to say this again. I said this a bunch in the beginning of the episode. What are we doing here? What are we doing here? All these guys, man, they're just so focused. Now it's like take two. Okay, you guys are just so focused on GTA now, you know? Or it's just like, okay, you guys are just going to drop everything else. We're just going to drop all the smaller developers. Yeah, what are you going to do? GTA? This, 
like i guess i was unaware that private division was owned by take two maybe i knew, I knew that, that at some yeah. point but i we just talked about it I, but, i'm yeah. sure i knew that but like I, I just didn't really come to mind until after all this and it's just like well you guys have a whole section that is supposed to be making this smaller these games. smaller they type publish smaller high, stuff over here highly yeah. critical critically successful games with smaller titles and stuff like that and you guys private division is supposed to be like an annapurna you know like a spin-off yeah. s- substitutary uh, uh side thing that's just publishes really good games really small indie games and stuff like that and it's just like okay great roll seven is an amazing developer to have for that so what are you doing exactly like why not just shut down all of private division at this point then you know it's like if you're going to close down one of the most successful studios in that then what exactly are we doing here i'm just i don't know it's very frustrating yeah is gta uh 2k and borderlands as a franchise is that are those three not enough to make you so much money are you kidding me right now ridiculous especially when you guys are about to have the most successful game of all time probably you probably know, one of them. yeah yeah like it probably no, it's, that at some yeah point. it will probably be gta 5 yeah i mean you guys already have gta 5 right it's like which is already the highest the most successful triple a full price game right you know it's yeah. like the only thing it's beating is minecraft yeah and minecraft is 20 dollars. you know this yeah. this is a full price game and has been for years now right it's just uh I don't even I don't even know what to say. I didn't even think about this one. <laughs> you know, I forgot about that. Microsoft yeah, overshadowed this one. Yeah, well this was like at the end or like the middle of last week, I think. Was this it when okay. this got yeah. Um I think it was on Thursday actually, because I think I got off was the it all show Thursday? and I saw okay. that. Yeah. Ridiculous. Yeah, absolutely ridiculous. So, I mean, rest in peace, man. Ali Ali World was great. Yeah, Ali Ali World. Roller Drum. I still, I, I want to play Roller Drum. So yeah, I, I really liked Roller Drum. Granted, it didn't like catch me as much as I wanted and like make me yeah. really addicted to that gameplay. But it was still what a, a really cool fun, unique looking game, especially. And it's just like, I don't know. Tony why, Hawk. Why the hell would like, you shut that shooter? down? Yeah, it's awesome. It, it was such a cool idea. It's just you guys are gonna shut them down. Why? It doesn't make any sense, especially considering how cheaply these studios cost to keep running. You know. No man. All right. Are you gonna tell me one month of like sharp cards for GTA Five can't like support that studio? Are you kidding me right now? Hundred percent good. Hundred percent. You kidding me? <laughs> Whatever, dude. This is so stupid. Uh, next up then, THQ Nordic will hold a showcase on August second. You know, I'm not really entirely sure what could be here. I know they. I think they do this every year though. Yeah. Um. Is it about time for another SpongeBob game? I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, I guess. Just keep whipping out those SpongeBob games. Is this where Deep Silver could be? So is this like we can get more like Dead Island stuff, like a DLC or something? Yeah. Are they under THQ? They're under Deep Silver, I think. But yeah, that might be THQ. It's hard to tell. Might be above them. I, yeah, it's you know, especially now because you got Embracer, then you got all the three things that yeah. they just named. Yeah. And then it, I'm a little confused on which one this would be in. Is THQ under oh, we the coffee stain is... or are they under Middle Earth? I think they're under I... coffee stain, but I'm yeah. not entirely sure. And then and then under that you got THQ Nordic, which then publishes its own games. So I don't know. It's a it's a fucking mess. It's a whole it's an inception of uh publishers. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> you know, it just goes deeper and deeper and deeper. <laughs> so I don't know what, what THQ necessarily has up their sle- sleeve, but we'll find out August second. Yeah. Yeah, it's hard to be excited for that. <laughs> yeah. and, and that's yeah. not like me being that's not anything about THQ. It's more about the industry right now. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just hard to be like, how can we really be excited for any event? Yeah. PlayStation showcase, Xbox showcase, Summer Games Fest, like are we really that excited right now? Yeah. I mean, you know what I mean? now with Xbox, it's just like, okay, Clockwork Revolution comes out. And, and it doesn't really hit that well like it, sure, it does critically right it's like a 90 on open critic or whatever the fuck but uh it doesn't make your game pass subscribers go up that much and it doesn't sell all that much are you yeah. just gonna shut down that studio then South by Midnight, you know or is it yeah it's called, right? yeah 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 it's like are we just gonna love those games and get excited for a possible sequel to those games and then just have the studio close down now it's, t- it's tough it's but tough it feels to like get excited so or even on even on playstation it's like all right. Well, most of your studios are working on like Marvel games. Yeah. <laughs> or like Insomniac is multiple Insomniac teams. Like that's not that exciting. And then, yeah, I, I don't know. You're, you're closing a lot down. I don't know. 
Uh, our last news story then. Mark Hamill will be voicing the Joker yet again in when Multiverses releases later this month. Yet again. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought this was cool. As much as like, I don't know if I want to play Multiverses again. I kind of played enough of it that first month that came out a couple years ago. But Shh, it didn't come out. They didn't. You, oh, didn't, you didn't play that. I didn't play anything. <laughs> <laughs> you did not play that. <laughs> you're gonna, you're gonna um, men in black me with the. the... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's cool to see Mark Hamill voice the Joker. He's the voice of Joker for me. I'm like, he is my Joker. It's the same with my Batman is Kevin Conroy, you know? So it's nice to always have him play the Joker. So that's really cool that they got him to do that. Because I think Conroy is multiverses, right? Batman? Um, I'm not entirely sure. I think he is. Okay. Um, Because this was obviously before he passed away. So I think that he did voice the Batman there. So uh, it's cool to see that mark hamill coming back i know that he didn't really want to do like another like big project though right didn't he say that uh with joker yeah or am i misremembering that i don't know i don't know i don't know was he tied to that the cartoon that got canceled uh which one got canceled it was the one that was supposed to be in the vein of the old batman animated series Uh, oh it's coming out oh is it it got announced today it's coming out on prime really yeah see this coming out yeah. on prime i thought it yeah, was tied to very Max. i know it, it yeah well it, it's probably it's owned they, they own the property but i saw uh today it was coming out on prime there was some screenshots of it too like the one that like isn't tim Burton it's, attached it's to like it cape crusader or something like cape that. crusader yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Let me look that up yeah you can tell me more info i think it's coming out the end of the month or something like that let's see yeah i know what you're talking about because initially it was getting canceled yeah and then, yeah um, i thought they canceled it yeah, and then I think that they were like, yeah, Batman Capes Crusader animated series gets premiere date and first look. Prime Video has shared a yeah, first Prime look. Video. That's interesting. Ahead of its mm-hmm. August premiere. That's cool. The latest Batman series from Bruce Tim, J.J. Abrams, and Matt Reeves will take audiences to Gotham City. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, it takes place in like the 40s or something, right? Uh, I'm it's not like, It's like an older that. version of Batman, I think. Yeah. That's awesome. Shit, thought that thing got canceled. I think it be discovery did. previously canceled Cape, Cape Crusader due to cost cutting measures, which allowed Prime Video to swoop in and acquire the series. That's ah, that. Why. Good you remember Prime. when they were doing all that? Yeah, yeah. You remember when they were they were cutting all those those things? Yeah, that's exactly. Yeah, I remember that. Get on you, Amazon. Way to go, Bezos. That's no. exciting. No, 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 no way to go, Bezos. Way to go, Bezos. No. Okay, we're not, we're not celebrating. I support you, man, with your weird ab implants. No, no, that's Drake. <laughs> no, nah, he's a pedophile. Oh, we didn't talk. We didn't talk about it. Uh, I don't even want to. We should have started, started the podcast. I'm not associating with that. myself with that anymore. Okay. It got too Why dark. Because it got too dark. It got too dark. We didn't. We 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 were talking about that the whole time it was going on though. We, we, were, we didn't bring we it were, up. We were, well, it's like I don't know. Drake's a pedophile now. Kendrick beats his wife. I'm just like, hey, you know, I'm gonna stay away from this now. Okay. Stay away from this. You know. Like, are we all supposed to like support Drake after this? Like, are people really going to be bumping Drake music after this? He's a pedophile. Not. He's a pedophile. Like, what They're are we doing? Not. Drake comes out with a hit, you know, something like a year or two or whatever, and people start bumping that. I'm like, hey. people are bumping not like us still. <laughs> That's a good for point. Days. That's a good point. <laughs> people don't care about Drake right now. <laughs> all right, Daniel, let's get into what we've been playing. Didn't even were here last week. Let you start. What you been playing? Uh, yeah. So I beat uh, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Um, I think I put about fifty-two hours into it. I think altogether. You got bump those numbers up, man. You got yeah, double that shit. Did, did you got <laughs> You got to double did. that shit, man. You got to get up to that 110, 120 minutes. Uh, it's official. Me and Tifa are together. Um, Congrats, man. I'm happy yeah. for you. Yeah, we're we're doing great. My sloppy <laughs> seconds, but whatever you know. <laughs> Not in my live stream timeline. I'm switching okay. over to red. All right. <laughs> yeah, you get that's that tongue all over you. <laughs> love it, love it, love it. Um, except when he yeah. got the uh the little boy voice, I was like, eh, you know, I don't like red as much. <laughs> I don't like red as much anymore. Oh, yeah. you're the pedophile. Yeah. That's what <laughs> me and Drake over there, like mm, you and Drake. Look at Red. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> uh, He's like forty-seven. So... All right. <laughs> all right. <laughs> In dog years. In dog years. Um. So yeah, I beat I beat that game. It. 
goes wild. Um, it it feels like it went more wild than remake did. Uh, at least to me, like especially in that ending sequence. Uh, and there's like a lot to discuss in that ending sequence and like what's happening because they don't really answer a lot and they leave it pretty vague for like the setup for the next game. Like I think. I think they just like really wanted to set up the third game because I think it's going to come out pretty quick. I think it's probably going to come out in just a, a few years, I would guess. Yeah, I think they can do it in three. Three? I think that's what we were talking about, right? That's yeah. the anniversary? I, yeah, 30th anniversary. yeah, early 2027 would be the anniversary. I think they can do it in three, especially with how much of the map is done and how yeah. much... how much Because Final Fantasy OG, I mean, you just go back to a lot of those places now. You know, a lot of those places you already been. There are a few more places that they're gonna have to put in as well. You know, and I'm sure that's gonna take some time. Bunch of the work done though. Yeah, but like a lot of it is already done. You can already use that map, and you see, you see how the map all connects at the end. I thought that was very cool. How the map like all felt like one big giant open world at the end with the boat, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I want. Yeah, I guess they're so they're they're gonna have to find a solution for the ship, like the the uh, what is it, the high wind? Yeah. In the original game so yeah. i guess they're gonna have to figure out how to make that work for the game because well, yeah you're, go, you're to, gonna get the to airship seven. yeah so it's yeah. gonna be, you're gonna be literally flying through that map so yeah uh, it, that could be very cool too it's uh yeah, yeah they're gonna have to, to figure that out that, yeah. um yeah and like where are they gonna go with this this uh the this game i'm assuming that they're gonna try to tie in as much of the original and like maybe a few other things like advent children maybe dirge of cerberus and stuff and like all that kind of stuff, and then maybe go just a little bit further. I'm going to guess that the third part, whatever that's going to be titled, is going to be more than just, like, the end of the game, you know, oh, end yeah. of the original game. I think that it's going to... It'll have to be the most drastically different from yeah. Final Fantasy VII OG, you know? Yeah, I think so. Um, what do you think the title is going to be for the third one? I don't know, man. I don't know, yeah. It's being thrown Reborn? around a lot. I don't, that's, that too similar that's to so rebirth? similar to rebirth that yeah, yeah i don't think so someone had a good one after birth yeah again that's <laughs> way too similar you, you have to do have the re though you know oh true yeah i i, don't, I oh. want redemption still want it redemption maybe i don't know if it, it, it's gonna have to be something clever that fits with the Rewind. overall theme of it yeah, maybe <laughs> that's a little weird i don't know yeah i'm not sure i like that one it's it's square though <laughs> yeah yeah i could see him doing it i don't know they'll make up their own new word with an re <laughs> oh my god yeah they would <laughs> re octopath traveler <laughs> um yeah it, uh what a what an amazing video game i'm still like thinking about like do i like this more than remake um, there are definitely things I like about it more than Remake. There are things I like about Remake a little bit more. I think maybe like main plot. I think Remake had a better main plot. Just start to end. Mm -hmm. But there are a lot of things I like about this more. There's a little bit more character development and things like that. I like the the the, the team is all together, you know. Yeah. Uh, I guess we're missing the Avalanche members uh, that died in Remake, but... Um, I still think that this team is just so cohesive and fun to watch. I think you were saying that as you were playing the whole time. Like, yeah, yeah, man. Just seeing them interact. It and... just feels like a fun family. It feels like Guardians yeah. of the Galaxy X. You know, yeah. that's it really does feel like that. There's just so many fun moments in Rebirth, too. Like, uh, when you first get the golden saucer and the dance sequence there. <laughs> it's like, that's so fucking cool. <laughs> you do that mini game with... <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. The little 3D mini game. It's like, stuff like that is just so fun and charming. It's just, uh, yeah, man, I, I really like that game, too. Yeah, the whole the, the last the boss whole, um, fight, man. I got uh, the last boss fight was nuts. It took I so love long. the I do it took forever. <laughs> I love the the like Avengers assemble moment though. It's yeah. like them all fighting the giant thing in the air. It's like oh, Different that's fucking sections, badass. Like you bounce between them. And yeah, stuff. yeah, yeah. I mean, we're kind of spoiling things here, so like be careful. But like, uh, man, the team wanna, up. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, you don't want to too much. Okay. No, no, no. I don't want you. We could say I, I'm not going to get too spoilery. Oh, uh, okay, okay. The the team up part was Zach though. That was so cool. That was yeah, such like a yeah. let's fucking go moment. Yeah, yeah that was it, awesome. It's the shot of them doing this together. Yeah, <laughs> back to back. Yeah. Now that you beat yeah. it, how did how did you like how they handled the Zach side? Because I didn't. I don't like it looking back at it. I kind of wish that was all one chapter. 
and and it kind of i felt like they said that beforehand that zach would have his own chapter i i didn't like the whole separating zach's story into like yeah. different parts at the end or the beginning of different chapters i was just like i kind of wish you did that all in one chapter it was too trickly they, yeah like, yeah it, I, I had to like remind long. myself like oh what was happening and with zach? at the end yeah they should have yeah, just yeah, left yeah. it all at the end That's yeah right. exactly maybe done maybe at... the intro was cool and, and then leave it all at the make end. like 15 chapters instead of 14 and then have just one dedicated zach chapter is probably how i would yeah, handle that yeah i do think it's cool him being in the intro though yeah like, be the intro sure. and then i think yeah have a, do a little hint in the beginning yeah and do yeah. a full chapter later yeah i kind of that's the one thing looking back on it where i'm like i kind of wish you handled that because that that differently yeah i mean there's other things i think that weren't handled of fully course. as well i don't want to say because a lot of them are spoilery uh that i think were not quite what i wanted but maybe it'll pay off in the third game it's tough to say this now because we're only we don't, we're not finishing the story yet so yeah maybe that it'll pay off more in the third game yeah i think the big thing i'm that i'm slightly disappointed i don't want to say i think you know what i mean i think it's gonna have way more of a payoff in the third game than it did in this game which is weird because it happens in this game yeah with if, you, if you know right? what i'm saying yeah yes yeah I didn't yeah. want to say it, but I think the era thing will pay off way more in the third game than it does in this game. I do too. I mean, it, it, that's kind of one thing that bothered me. The whole thing is just like, I am sick of the multiverse stuff at this point. And it's just, and that that's what I was saying was like, there's one thing I really dislike. It, that's really not the game's fault. The multiverse aspect really isn't this game's fault. It's that everything is doing a multiverse around it. Yeah. And it just, it is such a, I remember going into the MCU when they were starting the multiverse thing. And it's like, man, they really got to be delicate with how they handle yeah, all that delicate. because it can just be cop outs to bring characters back. And, and a lot of multiverse stuff feels like that, where it's just a cop out to like, keep this character alive all that type of stuff and we kind of got to see how final fantasy handles all that in the third game still you know and granted yeah. maybe by the time the third game comes out i'm less sick of multiverse stuff because we kind of slow down on that type of shit but i mean mcu is just gonna keep going full force on that for now so it's uh <laughs> it's a little bit difficult it's just bad timing to have a multiverse story i feel like yeah i think so too um yeah so yeah, I, uh, I'm curious what that third game is going to be. Um, but yeah, I beat that game. And then I started, um, I think I'm mostly at the end. I don't I, I don't know how long it is, but I'm mostly at the end of uh, Stellar Blade. Um, yeah, I, I, I assume I still have a few more hours just kind of seeing where I am in the game. But uh, yeah, I think Stellar Blade has been a, a, a really good game so far. Uh, I'll kind of see where I land on it because I think the game has gotten better especially with combat over time um i think the it is one of those games where it plays way differently and way better uh the the more you keep going you know yeah they, they trickle out abilities I think, yeah pretty long you know it's it it's too much you should have had way more in the beginning give me that double jump in the beginning of the game yeah yeah that definitely changed the whole feel yeah. of, of a lot of things i'm like now jumping into things you she know, felt jumping into pretty heavy before that. that yeah and then now I got the double jump and I feel a little bit better. Um, yeah, the <laughs> the presentation is very great to this game. It looks great. Um, I think Dude, sounds are great. Shout out to how well this game runs. You know, yeah. it, for a new studio, their no first problems. time delving into a AAA console game, no problems. And this game looks beautiful and it runs super well, super crisp in the 60 I've frames no mode. Glitches. Yeah, I've seen nothing. And it's like there's so many experienced developers putting out big triple a games that are having problems with that and this game just nails it so yeah and there's a lot going shout on. out to them on that yeah there's a shit ton of stuff going on giant open world sections i mean they're not the biggest but like they're pretty fucking big and then the game runs pretty flawlessly in all those yeah the, the music uh, I, i'm not Music's done yet it might be my favorite music of the year dude it is so good isn't yeah. it yeah love the music uh the combat yeah it's the game is definitely more challenging than i thought um but you kind of broke my brain a little bit on it in a, in a good way of like maybe try to block more and yeah. only dodge at certain times and like i was trying to dodge more because i like to dodge a lot in these type of games yeah um especially like devil may cry maybe not in from games from games i do a mix of both like what i'm doing now yeah from um, it really depends on like what weapon you're using and yeah stuff. yeah what build or and stuff like that um so like you were like yeah maybe block more and stuff i was like all right so n now blocking more now i find the game not quite as challenging yeah so yeah like, i really 
it, it was weird how quickly I got over the challenge aspect of this game to the point where like I'm kind of not having any issues now. Like yeah. not really. Uh, I haven't really had a boss battle that I've died more than like two, three times on at this yeah, point. I did for that one boss, and that was that. That is right yeah. before you told me that. Once you get the hang of it, it's just like it. It became fairly easy. Like at first, it was like, oh, this is like damn near Souls game difficulty. But now I'm just like, it's not really that close to that. Like it's it's a difficult yeah. game. Don't get me wrong, but it's not it's not anywhere near a Souls level. No, it, it's definitely a hybrid of like Sekiro and and uh devil may cry yeah like it is just and i think hybrid. it's cool that i think that's really cool because it kind of becomes that's what i was saying last week it kind of becomes its own thing in that vein when they just yeah combines a bunch of different games and kind of becomes its own theme like that and i think that's really cool because it has some combos yeah. like a devil may cry game mm -hmm. not quite to the extent of the devil may cry there's a lot more you don't, going you on don't need to like. use them like you would in a bayonetta yeah. or a devil may cry right yeah it's exactly. not like i'm not sitting there memorizing the combos necessarily just like, there's a couple i got few, down yeah. yeah like i like like the whole triangle one type of thing and then like go in and then press yeah, triangle that, again that blink you like zip to them yeah that's a good one. yeah i really like the the when the the blue or yellow or uh, purple thing flashes i i like that that mechanic oh those parries yeah. yeah the cool parries it's like that thing flashes and then you do the little slide behind the back thing or the purple one does happens and you do the whole jump back thing it's like uh, those, those are really cool touch touches i think mm -hmm. yeah definitely they they're very flashy and you can stun the enemy and stuff uh but yeah i've really really enjoyed the game i'm gonna see kind of where it goes the story i like the world that it's built mm -hmm. um i think that this is the one aspect i think maybe could have used more time in the game but it's like it, it's not it's not a negative really not it's necessarily kind of, what you're playing it for you know yeah but then it's like i'm comparing it to like devil may cry devil sure. may cries aren't great stories but they're fun stories sure they're fun voice acted you know all that kind of stuff like yeah. dante's so fun you know what i mean as yeah. a protagonist like dante's he's always charming he's always making quips it's like even it really isn't even that or it's like it's also not near automata which mm -hmm. is like top tier gaming story of all time you know it's like it's not even that so it's just kind of there like even bayonetta bayonetta is another fun character exactly like even whatever she's doing is whatever it's very grand but it's like you, you're there for like oh her charming quips yeah like eve isn't really even doing that so yeah i, I couldn't agree more they should have leaned way more into the fun side of of it or make her more like 2b because 2b she isn't quippy that much but she still has much more they're trying to go for that more emotional like you could have you could have gone for either the super fun side or you have really good writing and really good story yeah right to back that up and this game kind of has neither yeah it's just kind of there um but i do like the world that it kind of sets up i'm not sure where that kind of ends and goes I'm, I'm curious to see there it's probably not gonna like make the story that much better i would assume yeah but I, I i like I, i'm curious enough with the world that they've built before seeing the end that i would like to see like a sequel and what they could build more on top of this yeah. if they do or or it's a one and done i'm cool with a one and done as well but yeah 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 i think eve certainly could have used more personality uh on the story side yeah yeah, yeah. She, she certainly she's just like she's cool but she's just i don't know i don't, I don't even know like she's what her biggest personality traits are too. like she's very like curious about the world and stuff and asks a lot of questions but like she doesn't really have a defining personality trait and then the other side characters, I couldn't give a fuck less about. Like Adam, I, I, I think I, Lily's charming. I don't like Lily at all. Really, <laughs> I find Lily annoying. Honestly, oh, is uh, okay. yeah, I don't, maybe it's the accent. Damn British people. Um, oof. oof. <laughs> but yeah, I I agree with the world aspect. I think the world is actually very interesting, and uh, I was talking about that a lot last week. But yeah, I, I I do find the world uh pretty interesting. I've done a lot of side quests. I don't know if you've touched like too too many of them. But uh, really. yeah, I've done I've done majority of the side quests. I've done, I've done everything, but I've done majority of the side quests. Some actually very well done, interesting side quests type of things. Like I would say, it is in the vein of a of a Final Fantasy sixteen where it, it does kind of feel like fetch quests sometimes. But they're yeah. like a bit of a step above those. I would say I, I would compare more to like the really good side quests that were in Final Fantasy sixteen, where it's okay. like it, yeah, there's like some really interesting world building stuff in there. Like there's this really emotional one with I don't know if you met like the singing robot in the bar in in uh the the main city I or saw whatever. Her. Yeah, I didn't, there, I didn't like do the mission. There's like a whole really emotional thing with the 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 bar owner and her, and like he goes out to like get legs for her so she can walk around 
around and stuff. And then, like, he ends up getting really hurt, and you end up doing that. And it's, like, this really cool emotional thing. It's probably, like, my favorite story moment I've had throughout this whole game, honestly, thus far. So I, I thought stuff like that was cool. Not necessary to do the side quests, I'd say, but uh, it's pretty cool stuff. Interesting open world. Uh, the, the checkpoint system in the open world is god-awful. Uh, yeah. I, well, I just think the checkpoint system... The Period. general is pretty bad. bad. It's yeah, bad. It's not yeah, it, it is pretty bad. They try to do the whole campfire thing that Dark Souls does, but it doesn't really necessarily work that way. Um, yeah, I do really like the game though. I really like the the feel of the combat. Yeah, there's like little quirks I think the game could fix. Like, yeah. here's one quirk that I found that I didn't like that is just maybe a me thing. I don't know if you had a problem. I didn't really even use the system much. Is how the fast travel thing works. Yeah. You have to like go up and actually activate the thing. Yeah. It's like, wouldn't the ca- activating the campfire be enough? You have to do why it with the phone to boost too. And, yeah. Why do you yeah. have to go and f- manually touch the phone and pick up the phone just for the fast travel to activate? So I let me, activate let me walk camp. by it and do it, you know? Well, just what, you're putting a coin in the camp. Oh, and the camp activates. Why yeah. is that not activating the stupid phone booth? The most annoying under- thing is in the when you get to the second open world section is you have to activate the tower and that's like a very long side quest to activate the tower yeah and the, I, I, that second i did it for the first one the yeah. second one now nah, yeah 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 and it was like a very long thing so every time i would die in that open world i would go back to the ship because you couldn't activate the camps around it without activating the tower and that was very that was a very frustrating experience yeah, where i was just like why why is it like what a that? bad decision yeah it was a definitely a, a baffling decision to handle things like that but I do really like the game. I think it's uh, it's worth playing for sure. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I, I think this is a very fun video game. Yeah, it's just that's just what it is—a fun video game, good music, good like art direction. Um, don't really look for that much of a story. Yeah, didn't need the open world sections. I would say didn't didn't no really be more Devil May Cry. One thing that does very much annoy me is in both the the dungeons, if you want to call them that, is only using the gun. Why? Yeah, they you know, could have did that one time. They were trying, and I get what twice. they, I get what they were going for. They're trying to go for like a horror atmosphere type of thing, and even in like that second dungeon had like a spy espionage type of thing going on with those lasers and shit. And, yeah, and like, like I, that. I get it. You guys are trying to put a little flair in there, a little, a little something different going section. on. Yeah, yeah, but it's like eh, I don't want that. Just uh, and, and give me the sword back. I don't want to just use the gun. The gun is cool. The gun adds a lot to the gameplay. I think. And I forget about it most of the time. Do you? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I actually like it. I, I like, I like, stepping fun. back, and then I'll, I'll use the shotgun part of it, you know? Like, you do the purple one, the, the, the purple flash pops up, you time that, right? She jumps back, pull out the shotgun, boom, 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 boom. I'm like, okay, that that's pretty cool. I like stuff like that. Or the laser one. The laser one's really cool when you got... Okay, I like the rockets. When you got... So. It doesn't play as well when there's different enemies coming at you at the same time, like multiple yeah. enemies coming at you at the same time. It's much better when it's just a singular enemy that you're focusing on. It gets frustrating when multiple enemies come. But I do like pulling out that laser thing when multiple yeah. of those like spider things are chasing me. Yeah, yeah, the, the, oh, the spider things. <laughs> um, yeah, I think, I think that those horror sections were fun. Just do the one. Yeah, I think that first one. It's like, oh, whoa! I don't have my my sword yeah that's cool like that that was fine but then then doing it a second time was like it, it was right. too long on both of them where it was like yeah. this is way too long without the like yeah. the the second dungeon took me multiple days because i only i had limited time because i was just working and stuff and so it took me like two days to to get through that dungeon and i was just like oh fuck i forgot how to use the sword now <laughs> you know it, yeah, like i think it was there. longer than the first time you did it yeah yeah it definitely felt longer so it's like the platforming somewhat good you know, not bad. It's uh, it's better than some AAA games. I'll give it that for yeah. sure. Yeah. Sometimes I feel like she wasn't doing what I wanted her to do. Yeah. Like she's not grabbing on something that I'm like, or like, the one that always gets me is like trying to jump on like a very particular like thing. Sometimes she just would not section, like right? snap. She just wouldn't snap. I'm like, just snap on the thing. Like, right. It can't be that she'd hard. Snap to in do that. right when you're close to it, right? Yes, yeah. especially on like when you're jumping like onto like a railing you yeah. know like just jump there yeah the laser section anything to do with the lasers or like instant killing like that i hate it in this game yeah yeah especially because it would send you all the way back to the camp then and it's just like what the fuck like if it killed you like you could fall and it would send you right back to the the beginning of the laser section but that's what it should be yeah and then it should just been that if you die too i don't know yeah the, the baffling checkpoint system in this game yeah go uncharted easter egg in that one section though that was a uh, that was cool. 
I don't know. If you I, I don't know if I got what. No, what, you did. Was it? It, it was in the main. It was uh, it was like the same train as uh, in Uncharted oh, Two when you're climbing yeah, up the train. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Is uh, that was cool? That I was like a direct reference. That being too. I I just saw that online before I even played it, okay. and uh, yeah, it was, it, that's a direct reference. They even said that's a direct reference to Uncharted Two. So it's like, oh, she, that's cool. Her ass was so big she almost died. <laughs> 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 it almost took me with it. <laughs> that ass weighing her down, man. <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> That's going to do it for the Nerd Gods Podcast, episode 122. Please remember to subscribe to us over at youtube.com slash Nerd Gods. You can also find us available on all audio platforms. Daniel, anything else you want to say? Video game industry, you need to fix yourself. Look yourself in the mirror and ask, like, what are we doing here? What are we doing? What what you you really need to fix this because this is just getting worse by the by the week it seems like we'll be here next week to talk about whatever other studio closes down and breaks our hearts till then see you next week bye everybody bye everybody